to defend oneself in vintage story, one must master the art of combat, as there are many silent dangers lurking in the shadows. Melee combat, first punch, then ask. Every adversary can be attacked with a left mouse click, but beware, your normal attack range is pretty short unless you have something in your hands that extends your reach. Ranged combat, stones, arrows, and spears can be used to inflict damage at great range. When you hold down your right mouse button, a shrinking rectangle will appear on your screen. When the rectangle is the smallest, your accuracy will be the greatest, so timing is important. Hey there, what's going on everybody? It is your Papa Cheddar here with another Vintage Story tutorial. So today we're going to be talking about combat. So what kind of weapons we have, fighting different uh, creatures with them all, you know, what they're good for, what they're bad at, and uh, we're going to go over some tips and tricks with uh, using the weapons and whatnot. So, uh, you know, pretty much just teaching you how not to die uh, as you're running around the world trying to explore and build your bases and everything, because there are many dangers. There are many, many dangers. So there's uh, many, many different types of weapons. So we're going to be taking a look at the Stone Age weapons first, and we'll go over to the Metal Age. So let's get going. All right, so first up we have the stone. Now this is a ranged weapon. You can throw it at people, like this here dummy. And uh, it doesn't really do much damage, so this is kind of a waste, but it sure is fun, even though you'd be better off just punch them in the face, in my opinion. Next up we have the stick. So if everything else fails, then uh, this definitely has more range than punching. So it's better than nothing if you're in a very dire situation. Just a simple stick can do the trick. Probably one of the first weapons you're going to be making is the club. So it's a sturdy, reliable weapon, but it does do low damage. But I'll tell you what, it is much, much better than the stick. And plus, you get to pretend to be a caveman. Unga, unga. And here's one of my personal favorites, the spear. So it is a, it's very fragile, but it does have a long range. They're super easy to craft, and they do less damage than the club in melee, but you can also throw the spear to maximize its damage output. Although then again, once, it's, it, once it is thrown, you have to run back up and get the spear so you can keep on smacking away at them. Now then, for the best range weapon, we have the bow. So it is reliable, powerful, long range weapon, but the only thing is you need a lot of flax thread to craft it. So flax will definitely be the limiting factor on if you can make a bow or not. Also, if you chose the hunter class, you have the option of making a crude bow. So it is hunter only, but it's a lot easier to craft than the regular bow. Instead of the flint thread, you only need rope, which is easy to make from reeds or vines. So hunters, this will definitely be your bread and butter first weapon. Now then, let's talk arrows. So the first thing you can make here is going to be the crude arrow. So it only requires an arrowhead and a stick, no feathers. So this will be a lot easier to make than any of the other arrows. But as you can see, it does do reduced damage. Now next up we have the flint arrow, which also does not do that much damage. And it takes up your feathers in the crafting recipe. So in my honest opinion, do not use flint arrows. Don't waste your feathers on that. You're going to want to save your feathers for metal arrows, because that will be much, much better. Next up, we're going to enter the Metal Age. So first on the list is the sword. So it is reliable, it does good damage, and the higher metal tier that you're using, the damage will increase and the durability will also increase. So this is a very, very good weapon, definitely something you're going to want to make. So you just slew a dummy. That's how strong it is. Now if you look down here, we have the two swords, so Copper Longblade is going to be your basic one, the first metal weapon you can craft, and you see the damage spread there. Next up we have the highest tier of the Steel Longblade, so that does quite a bit more damage. It's going to be a lot better for you in the long run. Now of course getting steel is going to take a while in the game, so you really do want to work your way up those metal tiers because you will do more and more damage every time you increase the quality of the metal. And we also have the Metal Spear. So the best metal spear that you can actually get is going to be the black bronze spear. As of right now, there are no iron or steel spears. And it has really good melee range and throw damage. And it's way, way more durable than the, its stone equivalent. And here we have the steel arrows, which is the best arrow that you're going to be able to craft. So this is what you want to save your feathers for, is going to be the metal arrow heads. Whether or not you're using the steel arrows or even just copper will be better than using them on flint arrows. 
So if you cannot yet make metal arrows, then I would recommend just using the crude arrows until you're able to. And there goes another dummy. When you guys are using ranged weapons, it's important that you account for projectile drop. So what that means is when you're at a greater distance away from your target, you're going to need to aim up higher. So if you see here, I'm aiming at this dummy's head. I do. I miss my mark. It goes a little too low. So we want to aim up a bit. And there you have it. Same thing goes for spears. And the spear projectile drop is different than the bows. Now in the course of your battles in Vintage Story, you're going to be taking a lot of damage. So you might be wondering to yourself, well if I keep losing health points, how the heck am I going to be getting them back? Well fear not because Vintage Story has you covered. There's a few types of band-aids that you can make to heal yourself. So first up and the easiest to do is going to be the Horsetail Poultice. So I'll give you a 2 HP boost when you use it. Next up we have the Horsetail Poultice from Linen which is going to give you 4 health points, and the Honey Sulfur Poultice from Reeds, which will also give you 4 health points. Between these two, it'll just depend on the resources you have available. And the best bang for your buck is going to be the Honey Sulfur Poultice from Linen. So this will be the most intensive for resources, and but it will also be the best bet for you to stay alive. So if you have the materials that you need to make these bad boys, I definitely recommend it when you're going to be getting into some high speed situations. Alrighty, now that we know what kind of weapons we have at our disposal, let's figure out how we're going to use them against these creatures effectively and how we're going to stay alive. So now it's time for some tips and tricks. First up we have sprint kiting, also called jousting. So the trick is you're going to hit the enemy once and then run away. You're going to repeat this until you achieve victory, and this technique is best used against drifters. Next on the list is the Locust Bane. So if you guys have come across locusts, you'll know how good they can climb and they can get to any area where you're trying to hide from them, snipe them with a bow, throw spears at them. So we have this technique called the Locust Bane. The idea is you're gonna build a two tall block tower and pour water on the sides of it. This will prevent the locust from crawling up the pillar. Then you can throw spears, rocks, or shoot them with your bow. You can even stab them with your spear when you get a good shot. It also helps if you sit down or crouch when you're on this pillar to better reach the enemy as they're coming at you. Next up we have my personal favorite and aptly named the Nerd Pole. So it's very similar to the Locust Bane but instead of using water you just stand on top of two high block and you hit them with your spear, your sword, shoot them with bows, whatever you can do really. Alright now we have the Aquaman. So when animals are starting to chase you, such as wolves, rams, pigs, even works for drifters, pretty much anything, when they chase you, you want to jump into the water and then you can just swing away. The, the creatures move significantly slower in the water, so you'll be able to swim around them at a higher speed than they are and just take them out without them even being able to hit you. One nice tip that I like to do is after you jump into the water, you get between what you're fighting and the land. So that way when they start their fleeing process, they will, they will try and run away into more water, so that way they won't have the chance of getting out of the water and running away from you on land, where they are going to be much, much faster than you are. Alright, now we have the bunny hop. So essentially you're just going to jump around like a bunny or a madman and swing away, trying not to let them hit you, strafing all over the place. Alrighty, next on the list is the grapevine. So essentially it's like just doing a big ol' side sweep and swinging as you're running circles around your opponent, similar to what Genghis Khan did with his Mongol hordes. It's also important to note that you can sprint in any direction, going forward, going backwards, going to the right, and again to the left. So make sure you know this, that you can sprint any direction you want to and use that to your advantage. And the last tip is to just don't die sure that you guys survive at all costs and use those bandages when they're available to you. And guys, if all else fails, just hide, pillar up and wait, try to run away, or you can just die. Ah, uh, safety. As an extra bonus, you can actually light these guys on fire. That'll do some damage over time for them, but I would still recommend using a real weapon and not just hitting them with a torch. But as you can see, it can be an effective maneuver if you smack them, light them on fire, and then run away. That's definitely an option. Ah, there he goes. Neat. You can even light drifters on fire. God, that guy's so hot. Look at him. 
Alrighty guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you learned something that might be able to help you out in your playthroughs. Keep you alive and keep you going for finding all those juicy materials and finishing out the game the way you want to play it. So once again guys, I am Papa Cheddar and if you enjoyed this, please think about subscribing to the channel, leave a like or a comment down below, and let me know if you have any bonus tips or tricks that the rest of us could use to stay alive in the harsh worlds. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I love you, bye.